This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Franklin Township Environmental Commission in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act PL 1975 Chapter 231 adequate notice of this meeting has been posted. Roll call. Uh, Maria Santiago Valentin. Maria? Here. Present. Okay. <laughs> Diane Podesky? Here. Robin Sudan? Mm, okay. Arnold Smith? Here. Stan? Yeah, that's present. Yes. Yeah, okay. Walter Andrews here. Ted Chase? Jessica Johnson? Here. Did okay. Did I miss anyone? Me, Paul. Well, let's oh, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay, Paul. Well, let's get it. I just texted Robin because I think I okay. saw saying she wasn't. Talking. All right. Okay. Um, if we follow along the agenda, for your information, Paul has to leave early, so we're going to move him up to report on plans. And uh, then hopefully, you know, I don't know whether he'll be able to come back or not, but he will have done that very important task. Right. Okay. Um, chair report, I don't have anything to report. It's just that, uh, and in general, the word is that people are getting a little weary of uh, WebEx and Zoom and everything, and uh, attendance is dropping off. So <laughs> let's hope that we can be persistent and uh, you know keep our keep our attendance up. Okay, the minutes of the last meeting. I'm sorry, uh, Paul. You want to go ahead? No, and... you you can do the minutes. Good. One second. Okay, can um, I just jump in? Can I just jump in? Can I just jump in? Hello. Can I yeah. jump in real quick? Uh, Robin is saying that. Um, her screen is saying the meeting hasn't started yet, so tell her to go out and come back in. Yeah, tell her to log out and come back right, in. She needs a new link. So, Stan, She's are you sitting waiting to send more her than five? Link? Yeah, five minutes. But somehow it doesn't work. Jessica, what did you say? Paul, can you mute yourself? I'm not. There's no noise from here at all. I'm in no, a you're quiet. giving feedback. You're giving feedback when people talk. Um. Like I can hear myself. <laughs> I can't hear it. Yeah, Paul, oh, we yeah. have always this problem. Um, okay. Stan, she says she yes. oh she said she's in. Hold on. Okay. But she is. Okay. All right, never mind. Keep going. Okay. Um as I said for the chair report, but because Paul has to leave early, has another meeting, uh, he has gone in and reviewed some plans and I guess he he did share with you and so he will give his his assessment and then we can comment and we can finalize. So Paul, go ahead. Paul. Now we have to, I have to unmute myself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, the first plan is called um B L N twenty-one zero 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 two uh B S R E P fourteen. They, it's the um, right now it's a Chinese school that's empty, uh, the prep school at the corner of Schoolhouse Road and Cottontail. They're going to demolish that and build a new warehouse, uh, oh. which is 204,000 square feet. Uh, I think it's, as I wrote, it's a good opportunity for solar on the roof as well as the possibility of a green roof. Impervious coverage does go up, it's above, it's at 67.9. Um, since they're going to rip up a lot of stuff, maybe they, we get them to use pervious paving for the automotive parking areas to reduce, to take it down to the 60%. They are taking down some trees, uh, but it didn't, I couldn't find a, a, a number of how many in the northeast corner because they were replacing the building. This is a new trend, demolish everything on site and build new. And that's what they're doing here. Um, it is uh, bigger than the um, than the schoolhouse. So my recommendations were the solar, the green roof, and the pervious parking, and the the tree removal is from the northwest corner. So did anybody look at the um, the notes I sent and have any comments? Notes, yes. yes. Okay. And uh, the first question that I had. When I hear echo, uh, that I was kind of surprised that we are eliminating schools and we are building warehouses, uh, <laughs> which make me think that uh, we are sending children from school 
to work uh, like uh, we are supporting <laughs> child labor or something like that. No, the school's um, been empty for a while. <clears throat> well, yeah, so um, in all seriousness, um, um, it's, um, it's just the mentality of closing school. I mean, why was it, yeah. uh, why was it empty? I mean, what was wrong with this? I, I think this is, is this the one maybe that moved to um, uh, Mettler's? One of the schools in this area uh, relocated to Mettler's across from the animal farm. There was a, a big uh, building that they took over. Okay. Um, I don't know, I think this is the one, but it's been empty for a couple of years now. Ah. Uh. Yeah, usually schools, not many schools are, you know, abandoning their existence. They just move to bigger or better quarters. And uh, yep. I think that's what's happening. I, I think that's what happened with this one. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Paul, it's right in the Paul, midst did you of say if this was a private school or a public Yes, school? it was a charter. It was a charter oh, school. Okay. Well, that's got a lot to do with it. Yeah. It uh, says on the sign uh, something prep school, but it's been it's been vacant for a couple of years now. Ah, so um, so can that's we, the first one. But um, can the, we sit? Good. You know, just another command. Can we suggest that uh, that they follow the new coming um, stormwater ordinance? Ah, I don't think they can because the application was submitted before the ordinance. Is, the ordinance hasn't been passed yet. I thought about that. Until the ordinance is passed and in force, how can you how can you say you got? They don't know what it is yet. Robin, unmute. Okay. You are still muted. Now. Oh, we cannot hear you. What's wrong with that? Who is that? Uh, Robin, she wants to say something, but. Wait, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you hear baseball in the background, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Um, Walter, can we make sure there's an item on the agenda? Yes. of the new storm regulation or because I have I have photos to show, questions to ask. And do you just send me an email on that? Did you hear that? Regardless, yes, we will. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I did hear you. I said, can we make sure we have the stonewood orders? Okay. Something is delayed. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Robin? Yeah, okay. I, I, I just want to make sure we talk about the stormwater ordinance, Paul, more along the lines of what yeah. you said. So we'll get it on the agenda, hopefully, before you have to leave. Okay. The, the uh, second uh, item is on Elizabeth Avenue, um, 491. They're adding just a small 6,000 square foot building to the existing building. It's landscaping. They get, these people are gonna, are gonna put in a rain garden and uh, they need septic, but they're gonna plant 81 trees and 38 shrubs while they're taking out 12 trees. So I think that's a good deal. We, Absolutely. we, net, we net 26 trees. <laughs> that's definitely a good thing yeah yes yeah so that one i don't see anything to do there no new landscaping the place is already um it's adjacent to the landscaping thing on elizabeth and sounds they, like our first potential nomination for a stewardship award yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right I'm somebody voluntarily putting in a rain garden <laughs> but they are adding six thousand square feet uh building yeah. to exist yeah so and it's not adding story, right? It's uh, taking up a land, right? It's taking up some land. Um, yeah. And um, they also, it's interesting there on Elizabeth, they don't, they don't have a sewer. They're gonna use a septic system. Yeah. That's very yeah. close to the high school because it's it the is. high school. Yeah, what is it? What do they do there, Paul? I, it looks like it's landscaping. They're just gonna use the building for storage and a, a small office for two people. Okay, so it's a landscaping business. I yeah, I think, and they're going to store equipment in the in the building. It's an aluminum building. Okay. Um, I, I, so those were the two T I sent you. Ted, are you trying to talk because you are muted? Oh. This whole, wholesale nursery, I think, 
if I remember right at that point. That's on the east side of Elizabeth, so it's not yeah. not close to the high school. Okay, am I visible? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, in the next week's listing on the planning board, which I didn't see until just this afternoon, there's a new warehouse um, in uh, on Wiley, which is off Elizabeth, um, next to the firehouse, and Mavis Tire is back in there. This one is 355,000 square feet, and they're going to take down the existing warehouse and build the new one. <laughs> Um, and there also there's some residences that are coming down as well. Um, they they say they're going to plant new trees or pay into the tree fund, um, and all the existing buildings on the site will be demolished. This is Brett B R E I T Industrial Canyon. 222 parking spots, 84 trailers, and 51 for trailer parking. Paul, well, how big is the place that they're tearing down and how uh, compared to the I couldn't that find that. It, I, read, I read the environmental thing, but I couldn't find a description of how big the existing warehouse is. I can drive by there and look, but because it's, you know, it's in the neighborhood. But that's coming up the week after. Uh, it's on the next, the third item down on the planning board, the third meeting date. I think it's April 7th, right? I think so, yeah. And are they within the impervious surface? Uh, yeah, well, there's, that's that's what I would recommend. There's also a wetlands in the area, and they have to stay off the wetlands and no development and that kind of thing. They have to get all those permits yet from uh, Rant Valley and from the DEP. But they say they're not going to impinge on the wetlands. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I had wrote down solar roof, green roof, impervious surface, uh, and um, auto, oh, automobile parking with with 222 parking spaces. That could be a nice, uh, in, uh, that could be nice for pervious paving. It's absolutely. big enough. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So um, the other thing I did want to mention, I did send an email, but you know, I did get to visit, and Robin might have seen it. Um, I got to visit the Amazon warehouse. And talk to the the uh, warehouse manager. The oh. roof is the roof is covered with solar cells. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, so, we didn't get from it. <laughs> well, he said he he might look at the he took the letter that Walter had written uh, that you know oh, we'd no. written with Walter, and I gave yeah. him the letter, and he looked at it and said he'll he was going to send me an email with how many solar cells are on the roof, but he hasn't okay. done that yet. And he says they're using the power to, to power the place. Um, there's also evidently somebody going to go in to one of the other two buildings on that site on Randolph because they hear noises and they hear truck. <laughs> it's not theirs. But I got to say that the Amazon warehouse is amazing on the inside. Really incredible. Yeah, yeah. regarding the, the solar system, I don't think we need to know how many panels they no, have. We don't. But, we don't. but what is the percentage of the production? Uh, that it's covered uh, um, by the, the demand, you know, good, whether, good, good whether, question. Yeah. whether they still have to buy in average or whether they have, uh, they don't have surplus. I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, it's that, that building is 630,000 square feet. That's a lot of panels. Mm -hmm. Could you, could you ask him, Paul, how many square feet of the roof is dedicated to solar? It looked like most of it, from what he told me. Well, he was, he was, he didn't. He said, he, he said, he didn't think there was room for a green area. Okay. I mean, he still got HVAC stuff on the roof usually. I mean, right. so the the whole six thirty isn't available, but right. that's the footprint. Right. Well, it, it it would be interesting to know because I know in San Francisco they require a minimum of thirty percent being living, so uh -huh. or green. Right. If we start to collect what some of them are that are actually being used in town, it could help us help strengthen our chance to write yes. some language yeah. that could become a requirement. Yeah. Yeah, because I mentioned to him what LG was doing uh, with how some of the power was going to the rental units at the other end of town through that grant program, which I think has run out of funds. But I mentioned it to him, and that's when he said he didn't have yeah, he was using the power. So he's using all the power at this point. A lot of con conveyors and forklifts and that kind of stuff. 
but amazing place on the inside and very heavy security. Oh yeah. So, uh, so that's my that's that's what I've got. I'll send stuff to Christine at this point, so that'll that'll help that'll that'll ease things. If you check uh, the chat section, uh, Diane just sent link uh, to all the plans that are scheduled to be. Um, Ah, okay. Uh, on zoning board on uh, March 18th today is in three days. Okay. Um, Diane, do you want to make any comments? Or? One of them's a tumble, which we've looked at a lot, but the other one. Can you please house. kind of uh, louder? There's a house that's being yes. built that they need a. I don't know why they need the zoning board approval for it though. Which one oh. would it be? Oh. Do you oh. see that one, Paul? No, but that, that triggered my other thought because you all asked me to find out from Mark how many trees were being saved by them moving the building, the right. 80 feet, right. and Mark came back and said it didn't make, it didn't change much. Okay. So they were not, they're still taking down a lot of trees. Right. I saw, did you see the revised plans? You could, the site plan, I did see the revised plan. Yeah, that's what I think I commented on the last meeting that they were moving the building 80 feet. Right. It showed on the plans, like how they moved it. Let me see. I don't know if I still can find it. Is there any way we can object to them taking down that many trees? Given uh, our, our, our. We made our point. They have the point and they, they didn't. They, no, they moved the trees to allow for the buffer. That's what Mark told me. So they would hide more of the, the action from the. Traffic on the south but middle. We're, but we're still losing that amount of canopy. Yes. Yes. And we're still losing that amount of carbon sequestration and stormwater management. Yep. Boy, guys, I think we got to put some teeth into our ordinances. This yeah. is this I is agree. very scary stuff because if it if it happens, it becomes such a precedent. And then the next builder and the next builder and the next builder can do more of it. You see from the applications that I've got, there's there's two new warehouses. One one was there already, and they you know they're going bigger than it was, but one's a brand new one. Um, if if I may bring this up, Walter, right now, I I in one of uh, my conversations with Dini from Anjek, she talked about the wisdom of using what's called a site plan checklist ordinance, which is a way for environmental commissions to propose an ordinance that puts in requirements so that to meet the site plan, you have to do some of these things. And it sounds like a quicker way to put teeth into the kind of things that are important to us, rather than getting single ordinances one at a time. Yeah. And if people are interested, I'd be happy to talk to Deanie more, maybe find out what municipalities are using these and get some samples and bring it back to the group because maybe it's something we'd like to learn about. It may allow us to package some of these things we're concerned about and build it into the requirements, you know, at a package yeah. level. But our problem is we have to get the council to want to pass yeah. that ordinance. I, I, I agree with that, Diane, and, but we have to show them what we're talking about. So to at least do the homework, and I'm happy to put in some time to do that. Then perhaps we can start lobbying council yeah. members, township employees, but they're going to say, well, like, what are you talking about? Right, and right. It needs to be able to give them a sample. Mm -hmm. What do other people feel about that? I think it's a good move. Yeah, I go along with that. I think it's a great move. Okay. I agree. Is that general agreement? Yep. 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 Okay. okay. I'll, I'll work with Jeannie and see what I can learn from her and or other municipalities. And it's make sure check my assumptions, but it, it might be a way to speed up things that have been frustrating us one at a time. I will make a, a comment to uh, Christine in my report also about our dismay at the number of trees that are still being cut down on the temple application. Yeah. Very good. So I, who, who's ever next, Walter? It's your it's your move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, we'll do the minutes next. So, Paul, uh, thanks a lot. Okay. And, uh, do submit those and uh, 
I will. We'll talk about uh, you know next next meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Very this, good. This is not a, a normal interruption. This. No, I know. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Dan, Next, we, uh, we, um, we were- we... Walter, we have the um, zoning board meeting that's this week that they have one more plan that we haven't looked at yet. Oh. That's why I posted the link, there's that house. Okay, let, I'm sorry, Dan, you haven't- would, would you better share the screen from the link? Okay, please do. Um. It's the one, the temple we looked at already. Okay. It's the one, not the Cedar Hill prep. That's not till April. That one. Timmy Chakis. Yes. That one. I guess we could just look at the plot plan. And then there's photos. Uh, plot, plot plan. Just looks like a house to me, but I don't know why they're seeking. Is it um undersized lot, Ted? You think for that area? Wow, I'm going to tilt it like this. I know where it is? It's two acres. That probably is undersized. I think uh, at least when the that development was built it was a two and a half acre requirement okay well i think that lot had a house on it um, but the house is gone now so they probably acquired that lot it probably is not capable if it's the lot i think uh, they probably can't expand it but. So it's a pre-existing non-conforming. So we probably we probably won't have any comments then or objection. Well, it depends what the impervious impervious looks like because if we had our ideal stormwater management, if they're increasing the impervious, we'd want some green infrastructure there. Does it say maybe on the TRC review? I didn't see the impervious on the plot plan. Oh, six acres required. See so that's that? going to be a lot of hard surface on a small lot. The six acres required two acres yeah, existing okay, proposed. Okay. Wow, it is non conforming. Okay. That's for sure. Well, too bad. And we saw the side yard uh, retire uh, requirements, but what about the front and back? Did you? I don't know if that was on there. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Frontage was. The frontage is way short, but that's because it's. Is it somewhere here? Uh, I, I think a little bit. Well, I'm not in sure if it's up or down. Review, in the technical review comments, it was there. That's exactly the lot I thought it was. Wow, it's a good job, Ted. Somewhere here? Yeah, go up a little bit, Stan. Right, right, right there is the side yard. Okay, there's the front. There's the frontage 400 feet required, 215 existing and proposed. So they're off by 185 feet. Is this the place we would find impervious surface, Diane? Usually it's on the plot plan, but the TRC review, they would say something, wouldn't they, if it's off? Do they do it for residential? Yeah, they do. Okay, okay so maybe we just have to keep going. This is more pages. How many acres is the whole site? Two? Two. Two. But it says six required. Six required. Yeah, but even if it's a, a house, two acres is a lot. I mean, I don't like the idea, but two acres is a lot for a house for them to be over the impervious yeah, surface. Yeah, but if they have a big 
a big deck or a big, yeah, that's uh, possible big patio. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a big house they're building. Yeah, uh, did, did it say how many square feet the house is? You will want to see how many trees they're taking down. A lot of that lot is wooded, as oh, the yeah. picture shows. Yeah, I think if you scroll back, it said like 222 trees, but it didn't. 222, wow. There, well, no, that's just the tree. It says compliance with chapter 222. Will be determined at the time. Will be determined at the time of building permit. Hmm. The area looks like a lot of trees, though. It does. Is it normal that they say that provision will be reviewed later? Oh, that's odd, right, Orange? Look at it. Look at stormwater ordinance. Same thing. Oh, oh, there's... The applicant should note that an increase in impervious surface over 1,000 square feet may require some form of stormwater improvement, e.g. dry well or rain garden. And because our ordinance isn't approved, they could use a dry well. Um, but anything they put, because there's nothing there but trees at the moment, is going to be increase it over a thousand square feet. I wish we had a green infrastructure. Storm. Well, that's where the previous house was. I don't know whether Mark even knows that there was a previous house there. Mm. Well, that's that's the map. Yeah, the impervious is on the um, plot plan, but it's sideways, so I'm having a hard time reading it. Um, if you go back to the plot plan, it says zoning schedule of general regulations and it says maximum lot coverage you mean here oh, let me go let's see yeah, it's there somewhere i can make plus 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 box um Are you getting the information you are looking for here? I think um, it's near closer to where the house is. It's like first it says graphic scale, and then it says schedule zoning, schedule of general general regulation, and it has the existing and required and proposed. Maybe here. Direction. Oh, here is only the the drawing. It's near there. there you go. Existing will require to be here. Yeah, you got it. I see it. Maximum impervious coverage required is ten percent. Um, proposed says 2.34%. So they're okay with that. No, that's lot coverage. Maximum impervious is 20% and proposed is 5.6%. Right. So they're still fine. Oh, it's hard to read sideways. <laughs> <laughs> well, I flipped it. That's how you see it already on my screen correctly, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to look at the architectural plans. I'm just curious. Yeah, it's just a lot of house. They don't show any of the outside stuff. I think the percentage is maybe calculated to six or wait a second. I don't know. I wonder how the neighbors feel about it. Yeah. Anyway, um, are you done? Shall I show something else or? Huh? I don't know that we can say much about this. Yeah, I feel like this. Maybe we could just ask about trees. Yes, because I can't find anything about the trees and it's a completely wooded lot. Yeah, I think it's realistic with given our 
tree canopy commitment to the town? I can't, I'm not seeing anything on any, I'm looking at the application form, nothing about trees. I think we have to ask because the TRC review didn't ask in advance. Trying to figure it out. Is this the building here? No, that's proposed? A, where it says proposed dwelling is the building. Yeah, it's 3651 square feet, the house. But is that just proposed dwelling? Uh, okay. So here. Yeah. Okay. So it's a. Uh, I bet the driveway they're showing that before impervious coverage. Is this the driveway? Yeah. No. Mm. Nobody wants to do impervious driveway, right? If you look at the view of where you can see the canopy, there is at the, the front of the property, it looked like a pretty large canopy of the trees. Is it? Yeah, there's a pretty big area in the front there that. Yeah, but looking at uh, looking at that driveway, Arnie, I think it's further back. I think. Yeah. Have, yeah. See where the other houses are. It's going to be at least that far back. Yeah, I mean they're going to be taking down some trees. Obviously, can't even see where the house used to be. If there's um under applicant exhibits, there's a photo one and photo two. You could see if you could find those. They're interesting. There you go, photo one and photo two. Lower down. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me. So maybe Who's the this? neighbors will think it's an improvement. Yeah, whose house was that, Ted? Do you remember? I can't quite remember. And I know that I did know who lived there. I don't think I, I knew. This them. Is... It wasn't the Kirby's, was it? Is that the Kirby house? No. Okay. That was closer to the road, I think. I remember the 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 ruins on Jacques Boulevard, uh, but that was or or street, right? Which was uh, county or whatever, but it's a different one. Do you know what I'm referring to? No, but that second picture, if that was the view when you drove down Sidham Road, that was, it looks very much like the old Kirby house. Kirby, <laughs> yes, that's it. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Kirby. <laughs> Our Kirby. Wonderful. Yeah. Somehow I heard Kirby the first time. <laughs> yeah, I grew up with them, and it's a shame it looks like that. They used to be. I see where I'm Blackwell Mills, Jacqueline. Yes, yeah, there used to be no, something no. here. I went to a cleanup there of that property. Stan, it's pronounced, it? it's pronounced Jake's Lane. Jake's, okay, Jake's. I was more on the French. That drives me nuts, just so you know. There's a <laughs> sidebar. My in laws live in Berlin, Maryland. Uh, it's also called Ocean Pines, Maryland. There's a street called Beauchamp, but they pronounce it Beachamp. <laughs> and I feel like Jacques Lane, and Jake's Lane is right in line with that. That <laughs> sure is. That one that I was talking about, it looks very similar. Yeah. That's a nice okay. That's too bad. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Anyway, just tell on Jake's Lane, it's because uh, the state took it for the the reservoir. They took it from the reservoir. They, they took, took it, it from the reservoir. Property. They bought the property for the six mile run reservoir. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe we should move on, but somebody could convey comments back to. Yeah, I'll tell Paul, I'll email Paul and tell him that we looked at that plan since it's going to be on the agenda for Thursday. And yeah. we just wanted more information about the tree replacement plan. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Diane. That's a good idea. All right. And I assume those are all that are 
coming up on the zoning board or planning board anytime soon. Yeah. Right, there's only the temple. Okay. All okay. right. Okay. Peter Hill Prep to leave until the April 15th. We have another. All right. You're fading out, Diane. We have another meeting before the Cedar Hill Prep. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Um, That's how it looks like. Yeah. Lots of trees, yeah. Mm, you cannot see anything <laughs> from the road. Grown up. <laughs> yep. Lots of bushes. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, we can learn. Yeah. That's what my house looked like before I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder uh -oh. where it, maybe somewhere here. Anyway, so that's a distraction. Um, what's next? Uh, we had the minutes next because we, okay, we were, so we I'm going plan to with you out of yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. So, um, Ted, you sent out revised minutes. Yeah. Based on some comments. So everybody received those. So those are the one we want to vote on. Yeah. Okay. Has everyone got the chance to see those? They're just, well, I guess, you know, three or four word change or something. And Paul, and he had That's it. Something Diane asked about. And yeah. It is really more just to set off what she said from the rest of the discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well then. Um, so maybe I will move I'll make to... a motion to uh, pass the the minutes. I second. Get a second. Second. Yeah, I second. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's been moved and second that we approve the updated minutes for the March one meeting. All in favor, say aye or show your hand. Aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed or saying? All right. Thank you so much. And so um, those will be the minutes, official minutes mm -hmm. as approved, and they will come out, uh, will be posted. All right, now, if we follow our general plan, we need to open to the public now. Yes, we have three people in, um, oh. in, uh, in the public. We have Amy Spears, we have Franklin Reporter, and we have Veronica. Avenir or Avenir, I don't know how to pronounce. Amy Spears sent us an email, so I don't know. Amy, I'm, I haven't got a chance to read it yet because we do the emails after this. So, <laughs> um, um, so I move to I move to bit. open. Uh, I I move to open public. Do we get a second? I'll second that. I've been moved a second that we open the meeting to the public. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right, open to the public. Okay, so I'll start with um, with Amy. Amy, you are now unmuted. Hi, everyone. Um, Hi. Thanks for the opportunity to chat with you. Um, Jessica is right. I did send an email this afternoon. Um, I'm, I've attended a few environmental commission meetings over the last month. I'm really interested in learning more about how the commission, what, what the priorities are, and how the commission kind of intersects with general township business as well as the county and the state. I'm also part of uh, the Rutgers Environmental Stewardship Program. And so that program requires an internship. And I would really welcome the opportunity to chat. Uh, perhaps this isn't the forum for that chat, but to talk with the commission because I would like my internship project to be of benefit to, to the commission in some way. Um, I have a lot of time right now and a, 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 trying to kind of really get my feet wet into the, the world of environmental management, and especially in New Jersey. I did read through the minutes over the last few commission meetings, and I have some 
interests that I think kind of dovetail with the conversations that have been happening with the commission. But I kind of wanted to stop there and then reach out to commissioners. Just to, I didn't want to go too far down a planning process in my own mind without understanding how it might benefit the work that you're doing. Um, and I, I just wanted to kind of, I guess, offer my services both as just a general volunteer um, for tasks large and small, if I can help out. Um, Robin, earlier you were mentioning kind of doing the legwork and doing the research on a particular, my background is in doing that kind of stuff. I, I did attach my resume to the email that I sent. Um, I also have a background in project management and data analy uh, uh, and analysis. So anyway, that, that's basically it. I just wanted to put that out there um, as preparation for a future conversation to see what kind of internship you would be open to developing with me so that I could meet the requirements for this course and also provide some value, value add for the commission. I love this. Yeah. I'm just can saying. I, can I ask a question? Amy, you live in town, I guess? I do. I live on Old Georgetown Road. She lives down the street oh. from me. That's and right. <laughs> we are very nearly neighbors. <laughs> and um, how long is your internship program for? How much time do you have? So to do? the course runs it's a, a regular semester. So it started in January and it runs through May. Um, I don't need to complete the internship during that time, but I am anxious to to move forward. I'm anxious to at least get something in place. Um, and I'm I'm excited to kind of learn more and to I, come. Get I have so. I have taken the environmental stewardship program too with Rutgers. Yeah, well, uh, actually well, heard about it from Stan's LinkedIn profile. To be <laughs> totally honest, that's where I discovered it, and it just really worked um, well with my schedule and with my interests. So, and, and your ment your uh, mentor t teacher who is. Uh, um, oh gosh, what is her name? It's actually. <laughs> It's all uh, online, so it's it's maybe more difficult to remember. But is it's, it Michelle? Yes, it's Michelle, Michelle Beckus. Beckus, yep. okay, yep. yeah. So that she was my teacher. Yeah, yeah, she's great. She's great. So every every week we learn a little bit more <coughs> about different aspects of environmental issues in New Jersey, and the whole thing is designed to to build sort of local local stewards out of participants. Um, so the internship projects are also designed, or should be designed, to provide local you know benefit to local communities perhaps if we're allowed to do an internship that could lead into you also maybe being uh, a part of the commission which i think you know we do have an opening so i i would, you would be interested that. anyway absolutely like i said i'm really interested in helping out in whatever way i can taking some of the administrative burden off um and I really just need to learn the ropes. That's my goal and to learn from people who are involved in it. Um, you know, I love the conversation that you just had about the house <laughs> and the, you know, the, the, the planning decisions that have to go into these kinds of things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in the intersection between government, nonprofit and market forces to not to go too far down into the deep end, but, um, you know, my, my, I am trying to make a, a, lar a big transition in my life right now. And this is part of that. So I'm just Offering my services. So Walter Ted, are we allowed to have an intern? I don't know. I mean, the question's never come up before. Yeah. Well, the the project, it's I, I'm not sure. I, I certainly could, would be open to the idea of being an intern for the commission, but the project itself is an internship. I don't think it necessarily they they call it an internship. Yeah, you, I don't you think need it to... necessarily has to be an intern with an organization, it's just a yeah. project. You need to have 60 hours of, 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 of some work, I right? Say if you could email us what the requirements are, then sure. maybe it may help us find out if we, we can do this or how we can do it. I, okay, that I, sounds great. We could explore the ability of making Amy an associate. Now you are cut off. Commission, commissions do that. I'm sorry. Oh, really? You froze, Robin. Associate what? Associate member of the commission. Other commissions have associate members, so it doesn't go through the council and all that kind of approval. Or just uh, we could make her part of the subcommittee as a community member and uh, that, with the subcommittee. That would have to answer that. But if if you read the ANDEC handbook. You can see that other municipalities do that. Um, and Ted could 
tell us if that's permitted or not, but there's nothing prohibiting it as I read. Then it's permitted. In the legislation. Yeah. Um, so I would welcome that opportunity if that's something that, that can be done. Well, maybe we can review your resume and pick up this conversation in two weeks when we meet again. Okay, it sounds great to me. Please send the requirements because I will. Yeah, I will. I'll I'll do a little more digging and I'll also pass along kind of the the tidbits from the meetings that Mm -hmm. I found particularly interesting that maybe there's room there to build on some of the work that you've already done. Um, And Amy, if you find it interesting to explore this site plan checklist ordinance. Okay, (laughs) take notes now. Yeah, do a little less work and maybe we can really hit the ground running. Okay. That would be wonderful. Site plan, could you repeat that one more time, please, Robin? Site plan checklist Check. ordinance. Okay, got it. And I, can, I can send you a little bit on it. Um, Jessica can share your email with me later. I like forwarded everybody the, uh, the email with Amy's resume. So you all should have that. Okay, you. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Amy. So nice to meet you. Great. And, uh, Thank first. you. Thank you. I look forward to working with you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now uh, let's uh, Veronica. Okay, unmute. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, Hi. Good evening. Thank you for letting me um, speak in your forum. Um, I'm a resident of 60 Clover Place, and I was wondering if this is the right forum for asking about the proposed. Um, library extension um, near the school and the property in question is actually 64 Clover Place, which is right now um, an open space with lots of trees and a very um, populated habitat for deer and groundhogs and and, and, um, some some birds and uh, whatnot. Um, So we were presented with this uh, proposed plan sometime about a week and a half ago. It was the first time we've heard of it. Um, so I was wondering what our options are in terms of hopefully preserving the, the open space that's right behind, um, uh, right right beside the school. Do we, do we know if it's actually like classified as open space or is it just like a field? Um, it's school actually, it's, property. Yeah, it's a school property that's being um, bought, um, that's going to be sold to the library. Um, so there's a, <clears throat> there are a few residents that are um, directly impacted by by this proposed building, and we were presented with the um, the plans and the um, schematics, and so it abuts our property and um, pretty much um, gets uh, cuts down so many trees because the the, the proposed building is um, big with a big parking lot on it. So I was wondering what our options are in terms of, you know, hopefully preserving that space. Did we review that site plan yet? No, right? I don't remember, no. I don't think it's gotten that far yet. Mm-hmm. But it, it would come before the planning board, but the planning board, a municipal application of that sort, uh, it goes to the planning board for information but not for approval, meaning the planning board can't turn it down. If I recall the rules about that correctly. So, so we may be a little ahead of the curve right now, so. Oh, okay. Um, So then when would be the right time um, to, to actually bring this up again? And what um what what would be the proper venue for that? That would come before the planning board at some point in the future, and uh, you, as a guest or a resident or whatever, should be able to join that. So watch the website, and um, there are other notices being given. I don't know, Ted. When you look at the process, you will say this is. Would probably be a couple months down the road. I don't know. It's 
because it depends on how long it takes them to develop the detailed plans. Yeah. I mean, could you proactively reach out to the planning board and express your discontent? I mean, I don't see why that's not an option. No. Absolutely. Okay. And and you this is, even if you have the planning board can't turn them down, you could probably try to make a case for the neighborhood that they use pervious pavement that do things to prevent stormwater runoff problems, um, take down the least amount of trees. Um, I would think with several of your neighbors, you could help make that point at a planning board meeting. Okay. So, it has so, so, so it is possible to um to bring that up then. Okay. Um and if you look at the planning board webpage upcoming meetings and you like click through the upcoming meetings, you may already see them with that plan listed. I would just keep an eye on click through all the upcoming meetings and see when that project comes up. So then you'll see it right away. It was actually supposed to be um, scheduled for March 17th, but I went to the website um, uh, before I got on this call and it was canceled. Um, so, okay, we'll, we'll just have to keep watching on yeah. for that. You could so, also, you could, is you it could shown also on March 17th for upcoming meeting? Like, does it? Oh, that's right. I see it actually. It's rescheduled to April 15th. I really. I really think, Veronica, you should reach out to them proactively. There is nothing stopping you from doing that. The other place you can go is go to the friends of the library and ask them what are the plans and when is it going to be presented? Because the library needs all the friends it can get. And I would think they'd want to work with the community. So there is an organization called Friends of the Library. And okay. see what I could share with you. Thank you Remember, so much, everyone, for that, that information. Might information ahead of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. What was your last name, just for the minutes? Uh, uh, A V E N I R. Yeah, it's actually pronounced Avenir. Avenir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's the future. Yes, in French. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. 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 Um, so now we have also Franklin Reporter. So I'll unmute him, Franklin Reporter. Good, thanks. Yeah, okay. Thank you for being here. Okay. So okay. I uh, move to close the public session. Second. Okay. Then move and second. Let me close the public session. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, right, public right. session closed. Okay, thank you. Now, Jessica, I guess, <laughs> website, email, social media, but this is all sort of done together. Go ahead. Right, so I forwarded everybody um, Amy's note. Please let me know if you didn't get it. Um, the As a follow-up, remember when we had a note from Sofia Lopa about the, uh, the Gibbs Town, uh, resol well, the proposed Gibbs Town resolution, they wanted us to take a stand against a fossil fuel development project. Um, the, the, they wanted a resolution opposing the Gibbstown Logistics Terminal and liquefied natural gas shipments. Um, so we wrote back and said, you know, hello, Sophia, Gibbstown has already written a resolution. We asked that you send it to us so we may consider drafting a letter of support. Um, and she responded and said that they have not yet written a resolution, but two were passed in Pensacon and Runnymede which both fall under potential um, LNG shipping routes. Um, these resolutions were passed before a critical vote at the Delaware River Basin Commission that happened in December. And at this point, Governor Murphy has full authority to halt the project. Uh, she did include an example uh, resolution document and the two passed in Pensac and Rapid. Um, So I'm not really sure what uh, everyone wants to do. Um, do you want me to forward this to each of you? Um, that's certainly a start um, and that's easy to do yeah why not I'm not <laughs> sure like it's really out of our kind of out of our area right I'm, I'm just not sure what we could uh, that's it stinks like I we should be I would want to do something but I'm just not sure what we can do 
um, for um, social media, I, I'd like to, I'd like it if, and you guys can tell me if you hate this idea, but um, I'd like it if at the end of each meeting, we take one, one minute to, to pick a topic to develop for a social media post. Um, ideally, we would do that at the first meeting of the month, and then we would finalize it at this meeting and then send it on to get posted. I, I think we need to be more proactive about our outward communication to the town. I have uh, a suggestion. I like that idea. Are you thinking about putting a post with a poll where people can vote or give so you can put a suggestion under the post and they can click or anything i'm thinking any post if you have an idea about a post that you think we should be doing i, I just want to put it out there that i i think it's something we need to start doing the since we meet on the first and third mondays my thought was if the first monday we come up with the concept by the third monday we can have it finalized and then we can take it to be posted by the end of the week um or the end of the month excuse me so then this way we at least get one post in a month and we're still following all the proper protocols. So this would be something that would be posted on the township uh, Facebook page? Because we weren't allowed to have our own. So right. it has to go on the township page. So then this way, at least we're voting on it, we're approving it, and then we can bring it to them to post. Um, and we can we can start having a conversation with them, um, which would be really nice. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. So, Maria, if you have an idea, bring it. I mean... Well, I would think I like I like what you're uh, trying to the idea you brought. Can also add another layer to that. Um, I don't see Jessica. Are you still there? I'm here. Okay. We are all here. Okay. Yes. Um, if you want On our to couches. Anything, uh, maybe you can craft uh, uh, a decision. You can post an idea or something that the co committee is planning to do if the community gets engaged or make a poll or make comments or oh, comments are probably um we we, we know what we could receive um pushback <laughs> but if we uh, give multiple a multiple where they can enter their answer that can give us feedback for prior to Maria, you, you that's another type of poll Maria, you keep breaking up. I'm sorry. I'm not really. I'm not sure what. Can you can you email me what your idea is? I I think I understood. Maria was saying uh, that uh, things like polls or something to engage uh, community in the conversation, right? And I think uh, yeah. If the meeting they participate in the poll, so we know exactly um, why is the consensus on the, on the topic. What are their feelings or or thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think pretty much what we have done with the leaf blowers, uh, we, we posted uh, the event on Facebook without, you know, um, consulting the township and there was a conversation about it. And I think it was very useful conversation, right? So um, I think along those lines, but have it maybe more formal and. Right, that's, that's what I'm suggesting is that the first, we have two meetings a month, the first and third Monday. The first Monday, some make your suggested ideas, and then we vote on it. And then by the third Monday, that's finalized. The final thing gets voted on, and then we bring it to the town. So then this way, we're following all the protocols. Go ahead, Robin. Um, just wanted, in, in support of that, can we make sure that the stream cleanup stuff is posted in English and Spanish because if we wait a month to do that, it's too close to the event. Yes, I think my my I have a to do list. That was something else I needed to bring up. But I, I was going to wait till we got to the website stuff for that. Um, well, I just comes to mind as a posting ASAP. I think, and if we can do it in two languages, a good idea. So, Stan, you have that right. Yes, um, I uh, generated the shorter version in both languages um, and I sent it to Walter and I directly copied uh, help desk. Now, I didn't follow up whether it was already posted, but they acknowledged this as a ticket. Okay, so that means ticket. they're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, me... so and do you have the, the calendar for the stream cleanup events? 
uh, whether I have calendar for what? The, the one day event, the 17th, right? Yeah, I see it. it has up. For just yeah. Franklin, Jessica, or everything that, and, uh, that Watershed is doing? Uh, I'm not sure. You, you guys told me to go to stand to get the stream cleanup yeah. event calendar. <laughs> <laughs> calendar <laughs> they posted on face uh, on on township uh, website and it's actually pretty good okay. i like it they included it's even and it's pictures. in spanish and english oh yeah okay good we'll see uh i can actually maybe share. If, it shows up in, if it shows up in check we'll have to figure out what he's been doing <laughs> <laughs> Ah, there you go. Oh, that's great. I mean, they, I didn't give them this picture, this picture, and that picture. So they must have picked it up from uh, RWP or something. Good. Lower from Watershed, yeah, yeah. But this is my picture in the center. So this is English. This is Espanol. Perfect. Uh, and uh, and here is this this picture, right? And uh, this is garbage here for illustration. This is the actual garbage in that area. Okay. Okay. So can Very they nice. post it on the on the township Facebook page? Will they do that for us? On Facebook. Um, well, the township official page. Don't they have an official township Facebook page? Yes, we do. They, they should. Um, Make that a, a request to help this. Mm -hmm. Would it be here? I think so, yeah. You would have to ask for it to be posted. Yeah, well. So. Um, no, it's not here. Well, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So to, to keep going along with the website, um, I have to get some things from each of you. Um, I need, um, uh, I need your bios. If they're not current on the website, I need a, an updated bio. Um, so I need you to go look and I, I'd, I'd love it if you could get it to me in the next, in the next maybe two weeks, two weeks to get it. So I, I, I need, I need everyone to go look at their bio on the website, confirm it's accurate or not. If it's not, send me two an weeks. updated one. I need when you started as a as a like for a term for your term when when your term began and when your term is going to expire and then the correct spelling of your name um, and whether you are a member or an alternate. Um, I need to compile that to make sure it gets to the website folks so that they can update the website properly. Jessica on that I have a question of Walter. Am I now a regular member or am I still an alternate member? <laughs> I would have to go back uh, and uh, review uh, Anne Maria's original um, email to me. I believe back in December. Well, that was before before Seal resigned and before Reswan resigned. Oh, I don't think anything has changed since then. But she still, a permanent. She should be a full member. Well, yeah, we all know that. Uh, uh, automatic uh, do we need the council to to make that uh, Actually, statement? Yeah, it should be done by the council. Yeah. Yeah. Can we request that so it gets on the website? Well, we may we may have appointed Maria as a full member. I, I don't. Yeah, remember. we have to. Uh, we want to have Robin to be full member. I thought Maria was an alternate alternate. Or all right. All right. She be so, appointed as an alternate. You have to check with Anne Marie. Yeah. Robin needs to be full, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So Ted and I'll take care of that. Um thank you. All right. Where are we now? Let's see here. Um is that everything you needed, Jessica? That, that was everything I had on my list. So if anybody has a question about yeah, what yeah, it's just a format. Do we have do we want to be kind of um, uniform about the what what needs to be done in a bio? How many words or what need what do we say? I mean, you, you mentioned briefly, right? Some tips, some tips for doing the bio and I did mine wrong. Um, you don't want to put um, that, like I have in mind that I've been a resident of Franklin for however many years. Well, that's going to need updating every year. So put the year you I've been, has been a resident of Franklin since, since 
yes, two bags or whatever, yeah. you know. Uh-huh. Um, you know, any any this is your biography. It's not for us to tell you what it should say. Um if it's yes, but this but versus that, that, you know. Well, yes, try to keep it to like a short paragraph, be as succinct as possible. If you're concerned and you want to send a long version, I can help you edit it. I'm I'm actually pretty good at paring down people's work. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I, I'm happy to help with that. Um, but but yeah, I mean, you want to be kind of, who are you? What do you do? What do you care about? Why are you here? Thanks. <laughs> My bio was fine on the website. I have nothing I wanted to change because I did it really generic, but it's not there anymore. So I'm not sure how do I oh. get back. How do I get not back? Me, me neither. And I, have I no think problems with mine. <laughs> and Paul is out you, too, right? If you can just shoot me a note and, and say like my my bio was fine, but it's gone. I'll work with Krista and Bob to get make sure it gets yeah, it should be received. <laughs> It's got to be there somewhere, right? They've got an archive. Okay, thank you. And, thank you. And I may have it as well, but I'll let that play out first. Okay. I will need to modify mine. All right. We got two weeks. I'm not making it. I'm not holding anybody's feet to a fire here. But I will <laughs> in two weeks. All right. <laughs> That's it for me. <laughs> Perhaps this is the moment for me to say that I asked Anne Marie. McCarthy about archiving old uh, EC minutes, and she said, "Oh yeah, she can do that." So I can, I can send her the 2000 through 2003, I think, and then I've got to find time to. It's really just getting the format consistent from one minute to the next, and checking for ones that. I didn't take, uh, and then I can send them. And then I have to ask her, well, if somebody needed to see them, how would they get at them? Through Anne Marie, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, very good. So I guess we'll keep the minutes from 2010 on up on the website. That sounds like what I was reading uh, based on. Uh... I think it's 2012 right now. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Can we move on to the, um, what are we at? New business now? We've done the plan review. And uh, A on the new business is the uh, climate change vulnerability report for the master plan. I know that. Um, uh, who was who, who, who's, um, who was leading that? Robin, I believe. When we spoke last, um, we we were speaking about the fact that this is now a mandate from the state that mm -hmm. it's going to be taken into consideration in the master plan. And Ted, you had given us various dates. Um, do we have an opportunity to have input now, or do we have to wait eight years before we have any input? Mm -hmm. Do you recall the triggers for the master plan? Well, it seemed to be that whenever the master plan is officially revised, it is required that such an element be included. When is that next year in Franklin? Um, I know we have to update it every 10 years. Probably 2026. Okay. I think, I think our last, but it's it's a little hard to pin down because uh, I think what we did in 2016 was uh, what is the term they call for a, a sort of a fast look over the master plan and to see what might be changed and we still have in the works a circulation element so you could say that the last revision is not yet complete okay so can we have an opportunity to be part of or can we find out from the township how they're going to take climate change and franklin's vulnerability what's the plan to incorporate that into the master plan well um 
I spoke with Mark Healy about it. He said he figured that the main thing we have to be concerned about is flooding. And we have a flood hazard management plan and he'd probably just rework that for this master plan element. What I would suggest is that if anybody in the commission can think of other hazards uh, that the master plan should be concerned with. Um, and bear in mind that it's the master plan is a master plan for land use. So it's only hazards that would affect land use or where prescriptions about land use would uh, deal with hazards. Mm -hmm. so. But things like our tree canopy shrinking, for example, um, which would affect yeah. something like that would be an element of it. And I, I think you're right. We need to be thinking on this. Maybe I can ask Anjek what other municipalities are doing. What are they considering vulnerabilities? Um, so uh, I think I, the Shade Tree Commission had adopted a, a plan uh, saying that currently the uh, tree cover is estimated at 39% of the township and they want to commit to increasing that to 42%. Right, I read that, uh, yeah. I think that a... We could certainly point out that, uh, yeah, trees take up carbon dioxide. This is one way of dealing with the climate change uh, or mitigating climate change. They reduce uh, heat trees urban effects. Half the better. They, they, they cool the immediate area, you know, the urban heat island effect. Trees create a yeah. climate. I believe that was all or most of it was um, pointed out or discussed in the proclamation that the council had adopted and passed in whenever it was 2017, 18 that I've passed on to you guys. And the council uh, did that based on, you know, the pushing of the shade tree commission. So. So we have to make sure that informs the master plan that they really oh, take into consideration. Absolutely. And it seems like as we can see from all the plans that are going on, we're going in the opposite direction. And, and when it comes to flooding, Ted, we have to think about it in terms of stormwater management, because people will think of flooding of the canal rising and the river rising, but you know, it's South Middlebush Road. No. Yeah. And there is another thing regarding temperature extremes. Uh, you know, we have more and more um, warehouses in the town. And then when we have heat wave, everybody will turn on AC. Do we have the infrastructure that will be able to supply the energy or do we get collapse? Is it something that would be part of uh, our jurisdiction or? It's a, it's a vulnerability. You know? yeah, but it's it's more the utility uh, responsibility, but right? Anything we can do to help keep the temperature down in the town would reduce the draw on the grid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking what else. Yeah, well, I think I think we should all do a little research. Go on the web and put in climate change vulnerability. Go into the DEP may have stuff on it now. They do have a lot of helpful things on their website. Suggest. So Absolutely. Okay, well, I'll, I'll try and to I, do some research for next year. And I think, Robin, as you pointed out, you know, Rutgers is always a good source for yeah. resources. Yeah. And uh, complete streets would help too, because that could encourage people to use uh, more alternative uh, transportation right. versus just driving, driving, driving. See, nobody and wants to buy electric. <laughs> and could bring uh, okay and uh, having electrical charging stations you know that if you're going to put in a building 
they have to put in X number of electrical charges. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that seems like a, a, a given, but why are, is there some pushback on that? Um, why aren't we further ahead? Is it the money? On which? Every uh, building. Um, well, we Rob don't in New York kind of. It's not yeah. a requirement. Uh, okay. Maria? Um, I just want to add that um, I was um, had a meeting on Saturday about the group, environmental group, and um, in PA, they they did a, a town make a master plan like this one, climate, adding the climate change um, into the ordinances. They have to, um, they, when she told me, they have to hire consultants, and it costs like it costs the town eighty thousand so dollars. Yeah, I be, want to be a consultant. <laughs> That's a good point, Maria. We should we should ask the town. Robin, you, you, your your words are interrupted. We we cannot hear you well. That might be one of the barriers of. Uh, yeah. Robin, can you say it? Or is it my internet? Yeah, probably it's mine. No, no, it's the same here, Stan. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It, it, I think it's mine. I'm going to switch to my phone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, are we waiting for? I think we're waiting for Robin to make the switch. Then, see if that helps. Welcome to WebEx. Um, <laughs> All right. But that you will be paying data. <laughs> Maybe if you only connect uh, your phone as a voice, and the video can go through internet uh, with with the shaky, that's okay. We, we just want to make sure that we hear you. Do you have the phone number? Hey everyone, it's so it's eight twenty. I don't know how much I I kind of need to leave at eight thirty. I was hoping we might be done by then. <laughs> So I'm just a uh, heads up. Um, okay, thank you. So let's give Robin a, another minute or so. Uh, we cannot hear. We don't okay. hear you. I know it's frustrating. Sometimes there's a better connection with audio if you turn off video. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is true too. Robin, shall we try that? That we go back to your Wi-Fi or you know your internet connection and turn off the camera. But you need to re-engage the audio. I mean you don't appear to be muted, but we don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Let's try. I don't even remember where we were. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> well, um, oh, we're talking about climate change and, yes. and vulnerability. Yes. I, th I think Maria brings up a very good point that having a consultant to make sure we're doing it correctly um, takes us out of the category of being an annoyance. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. May put us category of being professional and because it's a state mandate and we have a few years um, maybe we explore that with the township manager because how do they want to do it do they want us to do it ad hoc or would they like it done professionally and maybe some of the people that are already doing some work for the town could do this the last time we had a consultant we had a grant from anjac yeah, but 80,000 is a little steep for Anjak. 
I, we did a, it was high when we did the ERI, we had a lot. I, it was a high, it was a high amount of money, right? Arnie, do you remember how much? What? I thought it was maybe $5,000. I did. I, oh, I think it was more than that with Amy green with that book, those books. Right. Out, right. It was a lot. But I don't know. I think it was 80,000. Yeah. I don't think it was anywhere as close to 80,000. Might have been 20. Well, I don't know. I have to, it might have been 20,000. 20. I think it was 20. Yeah. Maybe Maria, can you find out if that municipality by any chance got a grant and who they got it from? I, I think it's CPA. Um, it's where Northampton Community College is located. I just have to reach out to my friend because she was going to send me the link uh, because she worked on, on the, she was part of, a, of, of the work, yeah. but I haven't received it yet. And, you know, maybe this is something the township should apply to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. I mean, we're, we're in their footprint. They, they do care about Central Jersey. I know it's not health care, but they have given grants to area not for profits. And this does affect the health of people in the community. I bet we've never applied to RWJ Foundation before. So, once again, it would be very nice if we had a grant yeah, coordinator yes. in town. Um, Sustainability and assist, yeah, you know, yeah. right, exactly. Right. Well, when we got the Anjak grant, Bonnie did all of that work. Remember? Right. Yeah. Bonnie was great. Well, remember that we do have a full time township director of planning who normally basically writes the master plan. Now, many towns, smaller towns, do not have such a person and they have to have a consultant to write their master plan or elements of their master plan. Who is our director of planning, Ted? Mark Healy. So perhaps Mark professionally is being provided with input on this because it's a state mandate. So the no. Planning Association of the State of New Jersey may be doing webinars on this. They may be creating professional cert certifications it would be good if Mark would come talk to us about what this means for Franklin and what tools are in his toolbox and what we could do to supplement him on this. Maybe that's a way to start. Well, the, the New Jersey planner, the magazine of the newsletter, whatever you would call it, of the uh, New Jersey Planning Officials Association had uh, a passage on that, and I think I even sent it to you all, uh, which went into considerable detail about it. Uh, I'll look for that. Yeah. I know I sent it, it's possible I only sent it, no, I wouldn't have sent it to Mark because I know he'd be reading the same thing. <laughs> but I think I sent it to you all. It sounds familiar. I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Okay. Well, I'm sure Jessica wants to talk about the subcommittee meeting. Before she did, yeah. You are muted, Jessica. I thought Arnie was going to want to discuss that. Oh, okay. He said right. the summary. Well, most of what I was going to talk about has been discussed, what Jessica was going to do. Uh, with the uh, bios and what uh, Stan was going to do with the stream cleanup, and that's already been done. Um, and Jess can't do her stuff without everybody providing the information first. Um, we did meet uh, last week, um, Jess, Robin, Walter, and I, and it was sort of a prelude to our next meeting with IT, which is March 26th. Um, I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, again, you know, same with some of the same stuff. The flyer needs to be updated if we're going to have one. Um, whether we're going to conduct a new residence survey, um, how that would be posted on the the web page. Um, and there was the one item that um, uh, the photo gallery. Um, I think we decided that we're going to be developing that over the next 12 months. Is that is that what we decided on, Jess? That we're not going to have it on there right now, but we might add it uh, by determining where we're going to get the photos from over the next 12 months or something. How did that go? Um, the we were we were going to wait on the photo gallery just because it wasn't a priority at the 
this time. Yeah. We were going to revisit it later, but it, I don't know that it was necessarily within 12 months. It was just, it was a priority right now. There were other things we needed to get done. Right. That was right. my recollection anyway. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. And then there was also discussion about um, where is the ERI. I think uh, Diane might have said something about it being on the township website somewhere, but it's not on our web page, which is sort of ludicrous. So that needs to be worked on and we can discuss that with uh, the IT people. Uh, well, I, so. I brought this up to Mark Healy and he specified several places where it is on and was surprised to find that it was not on the township on the environmental commission page uh, so he was going to look into that okay that's great Ted. thanks I, I should should have sent his message on i'll see if i can find it uh, but i think through the planning board page i'm sure you could find it um i did find ted's email to us regarding the climate change vulnerability and the master plan he sent it to us on 218 um, oh, I'm sorry. I replied to him on 218. He sent it on 217 at 1025 p.m. Glenn, where the last thing you think about before you go to bed, Ted. Uh, so Good. Thank I, you. I think that's worth reading to refresh ourselves on the issue. Agree. All right. So, on all, we, uh, we finished with the subcommittee report. Uh, uh, unless, unless Robin or or Jess or you have anything else you want to add. Nothing to add, me. Nothing here. Well, if anybody wants to know about the electric vehicles, so um, I used some internet resources to find out that all ten vehicles uh, are uh, have have not been taken uh, for the recall. Um, I have a, a, a con connection who has access to Carfax. Uh, two vehicles have been randomly selected uh, to scan in uh, Carfax. Uh, these two vehicles have been taken to dealership for service uh, in November last year or December when uh, the, the recall was already available, but um, apparently uh, the recall has not been performed on them. Um, regarding the the charging stations, there was a software update, and some of them, uh, some of the stations, uh, the meter has been reset, which uh, cancels my ability to to connect uh, the previous reading and to measure uh, on the the usage of of those charging stations, hence uh, vehicles. Um, so that that's it from my end. Okay, so we do have one other, um, uh, well, we have it under new business. And that is, uh, I'm sorry, where are we here? Um, uh, we, we wanted to talk about the updating on the stormwater management uh, with green infrastructure. I think that was important to talk about tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. because it's overdue mm -hmm. actually at this point. So and we were I, supposed to see it. I have a few things on that I'd, I'd like to bring up. Um, okay. Number one, I think we should be able to get a status of it because it is such an important ordinance and it affects you know, so much of, of our work. Um, and I want to share with you a, the critical or emphasize the critical nature of getting this stuff passed on a timely basis. Are you guys able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. Now, I have, we all know that any application coming in now, they can't require green infrastructure. And it could be, even if they came forward next week and said it's ready, it could be up to three days before this thing goes into effect. Um, can you hear me for a minute? I want to show you pictures I took on Friday. Wait a second. You cannot um, share screen. I I no. It's it's grayed out. You have to make. Oh, okay. I screen. just yeah. I made you presenter. Okay. So I'm going to try that now. Let's see if I can find it. 
Um, are you seeing my screen with the photos on it? Okay. It's going yes. up. Okay. No. This is these this is a retention basin that is not yet finished. Off of, on World's Fair Drive, just behind University Orthopedic. Can you um, enlarge a few of them or one or? I did. Hopefully, it's just oh, you did. taking a moment. Um, there we go. Oh, no. Didn't happen. You're not seeing it yet enlarged? It's, it's like. It's flashing the screen, but. Hey, I'm sorry, baby. I have to drop off. Um, mm -hmm. That's okay. Thank you, Jessica. I will see you guys. I expect bios. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. Can you see this yet? Uh, Not enlarged. Uh, well, they're enlarged on mine. It seemed to try, but it didn't connect. Okay. Is it opening in different screen? You know what is possible? Uh, uh, Robin, does it open on your end? Yes, it opens on my end. Okay, I think what you need to do is you need to share the whole screen because you maybe shared okay. only the folder and when the picture opens. There we go. Now we see it, okay. okay. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so we have a structure or not. There are yeah, but we cannot hear you. Um, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You, when you say it, okay. yes. I have, I took that. Robin, five Robin, this isn't, this is. It may be finalized now. They're just using this landscaping fence in there. My point is this is this is a hard this is not a totally green infrastructure because it has see the concrete and the outlet over here. This is the stuff that the new ordinance does not allow. And with all the warehouses that are coming before us, they could be building these kind of things. I, I don't know how to make it impress upon the town that this is worth speeding up, especially with the, the plethora of applications we're getting. Now I'm gonna to try to stop screen sharing. And I would like to share with you what has happened to our family because of things not getting passed in time. Uh, oh my God, here we go. Across the street from Sedan Farms, Wawa is now building a gas station with 10 gas pumps in a zone, C1 zone that specifically prohibited gas stations. Is that North Brunswick that you're talking yeah. about? Yes, North Brunswick. It went before the Zoning Board of Adjustment and was defeated after four or five hearings, big dog and pony <coughs> show by Wawa, and is it, it turned the, down. Is it at the Cozen's Lane? Yes, turned mm. down seven to nothing. Then they went ahead, Wawa's face, it was not Wawa, but Wawa's front, went ahead, took it to court, and at, in court, and we knew none of us about, none of us were told it went to court. So all the neighbors, and there were hundreds of them, none of us knew that it went to court. It went to court. The judge issued a 48 page opinion, which we were told is unheard of, saying that the township had to recognize that in today's day and age, a combination gas station convenience store is considered a single use, and they had to allow it. And the reason they got away with it was that North Brunswick had failed to update their master plan within the 10 years required. They were two months late. 
and that two months late allowed the judge to grant it to them. We took them to court, the Sedams did. The judge threw us out. How dare you question my opinion? At that point, we could not enter any new evidence. Of course, you can't, I learned, because we hadn't hired a traffic safety expert ourselves, for example. They said that this Wawa gas station was only going to increase the traffic, get this, by eight to 10 cars per day. And that was accepted, and the judge gave it to them because the, we, the township was two months late. If they had done their master plan on time. How many stalls they have today? They're going, they had none before. They're going to have 10. That sounds like pretty bad business for Wawa if they're only getting eight or 10 cars a day. Right. <laughs> All yeah. the other no, no, eight, eight, eight or 10, ten anyway. Eight, eight or a, 10 a, additional. additional. Right, right, right. I understand. But the point is, it, you know, it's a gas station uphill from a farm that produces food, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that delay gave the judge all the leeway he wanted. And the, and the township didn't fight it because they were so embarrassed. They didn't have a leg to stand on. They hadn't passed their. And, new and I'm saying over and over that these days when the electrification is coming up, why would you put another, you know, gas station with underground uh, gas storage when in, in 10, 20 years, you know, who needs those? And of course, Stan and it, it, Bloomberg just did a big article about that. What are these gas companies going to do with all this real estate? Yeah, you, you have to remove the under underground storage. I mean, I guess what? one of my points is we need to convey to the township employees that Franklin will be selected against for these developments because we don't have the ordinance passed. So where they can't get it in another town, they could get it at Franklin because we haven't passed our stormwater management ordinance. Get your plans into Franklin. It's going to be cheaper. Yeah. And we have we have even records. When did we uh, started conversation with Princeton, which you know they they passed it. Two months, three months ago, right? So it's not like we passed didn't start on time. Super. Huh? Cranberry passed its updated ordinance in December. Yeah. Princeton did it in October. So just to reiterate what Robin said, you probably all saw saw the um, email from Anjek on March 11th that talked about the stormwater regulation up, up regulations update. Because um, I wanted to talk about it also, Robin, and it says in it the, the deadline is past due. Um, and I agree with Robin that we need to know. Uh, we it would be great for us to know where they are, where Franklin is in the process, and is there still time for us to review a draft and provide comments? It sounds like it's it's past that point and that we were told that we were going to see it at some point. That was my impression. Um, but we're here. It's our responsibility to provide um, our township officials with our recommendations and they have the right to, you know, not accept them or ignore them or whatever they want. That's their prerogative. But as appointed volunteers, um, well, it's, you know, at least it, it would be nice as we've said in the past, if we, um, had that opportunity to provide that input that was talked about months ago. Yes. And I, I wonder while we're still on the subject of stormwater management, I had a conversation with a neighbor today who backs up his property backs up to 22 dash 24 Roosevelt. Avenue in Franklin, mm -hmm. which is some, I had it up here a moment ago. It's the American test bakery. He knows for a fact, because he watched when that property was proposed that there was a pink line that delineated the wetland. That line disappeared and they, they literally put foundation on those wetlands. That property has two wet ponds where they supposedly divert the water. That is now back 
backed up onto another neighbor who's standing water now as a result of these two wet ponds. It was water housing uh, built by Creek, and it's created problems now that, that are on not time of construction. So I think a lot of vigilance, vigilance <laughs> is important on our part because once this happens, there's there's no recourse. So I this this is urgent if we're worried about our vulnerability to climate change and we're not taking care of these things, it's just gonna multiply. So I wondered if it's a way to pull a plan on that building to see if there was what lands indicated, did they move the line? I don't know that we can do anything about it now, but it's causing problems for others. And it's very discouraging to think this stuff is happening anyway. Uh, I remember the plans for that building and uh, they showed the wetlands and then they were putting the detention basin in the one little peninsula that extended into the wetlands that wasn't wetlands because they couldn't put the detention basin in the wetlands they had to put it right next to the wetlands mm -hmm. among the wetlands one might say well apparently it's as I understand it from someone who walks the ground regularly, he's an excavator, that what he saw, they literally built over the wetlands. So I'm not sure that we wanna go back and tackle that one, but we certainly wanna prevent it going forward. And these warehouse guys have a lot of money. People like Frank Greek has a lot of money and they can hire experts to make an argument any which way. And you have Vince Dominic cheering them on. Economic development. Yeah, and, and it's at a price that we're going to pay heavily for, but nobody sees it in the short term unless we're making noise about it. Because I don't think anybody else will do it. From a, a garbage viewpoint, everything that is manufactured becomes at some point garbage because that's how this society has developed. So all the warehouses, what they store is potential garbage, right? People buy it and after a few uses, they dispose of it. So and it's, hard sense, for us to, it's hard for us to control that, but we could control the warehouse. These are, to begin with. These are pre dumps actually. <laughs> so, um, so Ted, can you for um, our next meeting, see if you can find out what the status is of our stormwater management plan. I ask Mark Healy regularly and I get no meaningful response. I think Sophie Glovier asked him and he said, oh, we're actively working on it. That's all I can do. Don't, don't you think we from are a risk actively management? working on it. I think from a risk management point of view, the council should be aware and should be asking Mark and asking what his plan is to get it done. Yeah. Ask for a specific I, 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 I date. Will, let, I will say this. Other communities, and I've seen a lot of Middlesex County plans, they just adopted the DEP's um, recommended, yeah. Recommended plan without change. Actually, Cranberry, I think, added some of the things from the watershed. Uh, our existing ordinance has things that probably nobody else has. Our whole thing about requiring inspection, regular inspection of stormwater management facilities and charging a fee for the township to inspect them. That's is encouraging. That's relatively encouraging. unique thing. So I think Mark is probably trying to work with the existing uh, rather than 
just adopting the uh, the DEP, yeah. ordinance. That was that was encouraging. Better ordinance than the state, but uh, I agree. I would like to know where he's at in it. Why can't he tell us? It just seems. I hate to say suspicious. It's either lazy or suspicious. <laughs> well, you know, he does have other things to do as but a he could, plan. He could tell us that. And and some of them. And who who is the responsibility for doing this? I mean. You know, Ted, I, I spent a lot of time writing up that analysis that we sent over. They could at least acknowledge we got your analysis. And we're working to do better than the state. Stay tuned. That would be the polite thing to do. A little Thank bit. you. There's a bow. Thank you. Sorry. What, Ted? No, I just said tuned is about all we are. Okay. All right. Um, but you'll continue to ask, and uh, maybe one day we'll be surprised. But I don't know what other pressure or. You mean good surprise or? <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, someday it's got to come, and I. I yeah. He it's says right. he's working on it. Okay. Okay, um, we we do have, uh, maybe we've already covered that. One other item under new business, and that was assessing the township environmental resource inventory. Yeah, uh, I think we covered that. Yeah, I believe you have. If we go down to old business updates, um, we covered certainly the stormwater well, not necessarily the retrofit program, but I believe that, as I remember that, um, we had a report on it. And I don't believe that anything, I mean, it was ongoing and it's still ongoing. I'm not sure that any reason to, to have an update at some point. Well, I, I spoke with, I connected up with, Tara Kenyon about that. And she was expecting, like she said, the Rutgers people are actually doing the work, had completed their field work, and she was expecting their report within the next couple of weeks. And that was three weeks ago or so. But when she's got it, she'd love to come to our environmental commission about it. And here I should also report that uh, Bob Vornlocker and the mayor are in agreement of <clears throat> paying Tara some additional money to be township staff to the Environmental Commission and attend commission meetings. And uh -huh. we discussed this in the council caucus. One member was very dubious about it, but it was agreed that, well, let's try it for this year and see at the end of the year how it's worked out. Now, it hasn't yet surfaced in any actual action of a council meeting. I will uh, ask Bob. I, the last I heard was, well, exactly how we were going to finance it would be discussed at the next meeting of the Financial Oversight Committee. And I haven't heard any more from that, but I will ask Bob Vornlocker about that. Great. Thank you. I think we all agree that anything that has to do with stormwater now is, is should be high priority. Um, sustainable Jersey. Um, Anything on that front, uh, Ted? Uh, no. Well, there have been some announcements of new uh, actions. I'm trying to remember what it was. I think, yeah, they they have an action whereby if you adopt anything beyond the state's uh, basic um, 
revision to the stormwater management ordinance, you can get points as an action there. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that we will be considerably beyond and can uh, get some points from that. And as I remember, community solar is is not on hold, but sort of in question right now. Is that right? Well, the, the company we heard from, I mean, they were making application to the P, the BPU for being one of the approved uh, plan. So um, we haven't heard whether they have been approved. And I suspect if they're not approved, we won't hear. That's as much as I know about it. Okay. I would think that given the size of the pro proposal that the BPU should like that. On the other hand, then it will take up more of the the subsidy that they offer. So, actually, uh, yeah, Crystal Pruitt works for the BPU now. She ought to be able to find out where that's at. Yeah, I think so because uh, she's particularly in the equity division, and uh, solar community solar is considered to be equity stuff. So yeah. she should she should know the deadlines and uh, regardless whether you are approved or not, they should tell you. It should be publicly uh, available. Well, I would. I just mean that the, the company might not tell us if they weren't approved. You know, like, yeah, sure, the BPU should inform us. But again, they would be more likely to inform you if it is approved. So. Mm. Everybody knows that we we are very much questioning, you know, underground utilities being just sort of voluntary by the the developers rather than some ordinance or something. And uh, I guess we are still sort of waiting on that. Is that correct? Okay. All right. And uh, if we go down here. Stormwater ordinance, green infrastructure. Um, about the EV. Um, well, I made some uh, comment already, but um, Ted, uh, uh, mandatory question. Um, did you hear back from Mr. Von Locker about our question about intended use of? electric vehicles when the pandemic is over? Uh, to, certainly to some extent. I mean, he this was in a phone call he ran through rather rapidly. And, and one of the points is the um, three of the vehicles are now being used for the, the class three special police that were supposed to stand around in the schools and defend them against active shooters. Uh, I guess they come to the municipal building and then they take the electric car to whatever their, <coughs> their school is. Um, but so, when oh. the COVID emergency is over and the then those will go back to the field assessors who will use them uh, to go <coughs> inspect um, houses for assessment. Okay, okay. Uh, and he ran through a number, I, I can't remember all the other uses that he uh, users. You mentioned, you mentioned that three- Somebody specifically. You mentioned that three vehicles would be used uh, as a, a police vehicles for uh, patrolling uh, schools? Well, did you did I understand to go that? from the municipal building to the schools? I think it's basically what they're used for, which is certainly not a very intensive use. 
uh, but that's what they were going to do. Is it possible prior to that the people were just driving their own personal cars to the school? Uh, I, I don't know. I think part of the point was that prior to that, they may have essentially carpooled to schools, but with COVID, they're not going to carpool. No, they have the old caprices. Like when I used to drop my kids off at school, the um, the police, the special police officer had one of those old caprices parked in their spot. So now they have, I guess, the EV, which is better oh. than the old caprice. And in the course of approving some new police cars in, in the budget for the police, we were told how old the cars they were giving up were as far back as 2002. Hard to imagine a 19 year old police car. But, <laughs> okay. But, so, you know, the old ones are used for what they call outside jobs, which is the police car that stands by when PSE and G or anybody is doing work along a roadway. <clears throat> Traffic control. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and those vehicles have to be uh, idling, so that's that's where the impact is. If uh, if we use selective. You say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. That's a small step forward. Um, so. <laughs> I could remember all of the things he told me, but he. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I could ask again if if if, if he, he can provide it in writing then we have it more formal uh, yeah we can share it within within the uh, commission and we can just take it off the table right yeah yeah all right um when we talk about the green roof uh, initiative you know paul reported he had stopped by the, uh, the warehouse over there and talked to the general manager and um, solar were all always there, already there, but we were asking if there's any space left at all. But, you know, we, we probably, we got, we sent Amazon what our thoughts were and our suggestions, but it was a little late for this particular building. But for the, the ones coming up, hopefully, we will get the information to them in time, or maybe it, it, it flows from the headquarters all over the nation and particularly to New Jersey, but I'm not sure that we can do anything else right now. Walter, on, on that subject, I think until we have some teeth where it's a requirement in certain yeah. instances, they're not gonna pay attention to our recommendations. Yeah. So I think our focus really needs to be on how can we develop some teeth? And I think that's where the site plan checklist ordinance could yeah. be helpful as well as climate change vulnerability if we can build it into the master plan in some way because it helps reduce our vulnerability to climate change that's where we get the teeth mm -hmm. so well, i think we have to keep our sights there one thing that i would suggest and this would be an ordinance change i think i discussed this with arnie because he wanted to discuss it with the shade tree commission uh if if it were provided that if uh, a a new development was going to have to pay money to the uh, shade tree fund mm -hmm. that money could be used instead for a green roof so in essence, the green roof would be subsidized because uh, the, the shade tree, the, the shade tree fund is they got a couple of hundred thousand dollars in it now, and that's why I say that we should be planting township open space with new trees. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted, thank you for reminding me about that. I had mentioned this to Robin. We discussed this also that. I, I had meant to send uh, a uh, email to Mark Healy about uh, those funds and uh, just 
how that money can be used and where that comes from. Is that based on state statute or is that the uh, township who decided they wanted it in there, that it was in the ordinance that it's just to be used for purchasing and planting trees? I wanted to find out or we wanted to find out where that comes from, if it's possible for the township to, to change the ordinance so that money can be used for other green ventures other than just purchasing and planting trees. So that was on my list of things to do today and I forgot, but you just reminded me, thank you. And similarly, the possibility of raising the fee schedule in the shade tree ordinance so that because trees are more valuable now due to climate change, we, we, we come up with a concomitant cost, build that into something that's an improvement over what we have, build that into the shade tree ordinance so that the money going into the tree fund is a more substantial and then becomes a meaningful offset to putting in a green roof. Yeah, from what we've seen, it really doesn't stop people from cutting down trees. Right. We need a little more pain which then makes more of an incentive for the roof. Exactly. Okay. All right. And in, in terms of the sustainability officer grant coordinator, uh, I guess we Robin shared with us a comment from the mayor that, that well, I don't want to misquote her that, but basically he may consider or the council may consider using current staff for such a position. Is that right? And Ted gave us an update on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. And we had a perfect example earlier in the evening of why we would need a grants coordinator. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We are at a point where we can open to the public again. Can we have a motion? Walter, before we go on. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to go back to the ERI. Like, can we put it on the agenda again for next oh. meeting? Because I wanted sure. to talk about now it's getting late though but now that the eri has been approved and we have the final version and it's been approved by the planning board and it exists in its final form like what we're going to do with it if we can use any budget money to maybe get a couple copies printed for the library maybe we could give it out to the board of ed so if we could just put that on the agenda again for next meeting so we could talk about if anybody has any good ideas yeah, and, and po posting the fact that it exists and it's on our website and you can go, re you know, access it and read it. Right, everybody on the EC that's not familiar with it, some of us have read it line by line for 10 years, but. I've never just, read it. Yeah, I, just breeze through it if you haven't seen it, because it's a, a fantastic resource for Franklin. And like once everyone's familiar with it, we can really decide how we can use it best, I think. I, I'm thinking. And it will circle back to the suggestions that we had at the beginning of this meeting every month to have a program to, you know, or, or some public activity on Facebook. We can ask people on Facebook. Can you name 1 part on of the ERI that you like? Mm -hmm. right? So we would paste it on the Facebook and in a, in a comment section. Can you name 1 that you like? And we would engage people in conversation. I'm, I do like this. I don't want to. There's a lot in there, like endangered species, um, history of Franklin. It's a, it is a great resource. That's yeah. why I'm glad that we finally have access to it. But yeah, if we can put it on the agenda for next meeting, can maybe all of okay. us talk about it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And the other thing I had was a question for Ted. Is like when the budget, like if, if the environmental commission wanted more money in our budget for 2021-22, is that a possibility? During the budget planning process. For what? Well, I was thinking that since we have the plastic bag ordinance coming to a, into effect in 22, if maybe we could do some kind of um, like public Education. campaign to give out reusable bags to the community, either at Franklin Day or through the senior center or something. And like, and that's going forward a year, because isn't it July to July, the fiscal year? Well, it would be great to uh, the Clean Communities uh, grant, which I think we'd heard at some point, a lot of that had been used for the uh, Franklin Times over the past years. And this year, in 2020, there wasn't the Franklin Times. So where 
Was that <laughs> money used? And I think that money might be something great to be used for uh, for those plast for you know for those bags that can be given out. And if there's a Franklin Day this year, that would be a great place to be giving them out. Absolutely. And maybe we could have posters and be in front of the supermarkets exactly and promote the EC as well as the use of cloth bags. A lot of the environmental commissions around the state are really helping the state to move forward with this in a positive way to help their community. I just think in Frank to also be part of that. I'd like to mention the little uh, farmer's market, well, vegetable mart, I call it, that I shop at in Kendall Park. There's a sign up at the register saying that in line with this uh, new state law, uh, after April 1st of this year, they are no longer giving out plastic bags for people, the produce people are taking home, people bring their own bag. That's a great way to be proactive. Give five or six to the food bank. But. Uh, you know, and maybe on, uh, when we're talking about monthly news, we could highlight, you know, a community action like that to sort of bring to the attention of people what's coming down the road. Right. right. Yeah. We have create some, time. Create some attractive posters, get them to places yeah, like the food bank, the library. These should mm -hmm. be partners in getting the word out in town. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Can we open to the public now? Get a motion? I move. Second? Second. We move second that we open to the public. All in favor say aye. Hi. Okay. Approved. Open to the public. Okay. okay. So who is there? So we have Amy and Franklin reporter. Franklin reporter. I'm just <laughs> muting. No thanks. No thanks. Okay. Uh, Amy. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. okay. I uh, move to close. Uh, okay, we move second that we close. All in favor, show it so you know by saying aye. 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 Show your hand. Okay, thank you. And uh, I know, um, Arno, you had mentioned something about executive session being, I don't know, a regular consideration at the end of the meeting or. No, 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 no. I, I was just talking about, oh, I, I was saying that it should be on the agenda. Uh, um, it doesn't mean we're going to have to use it, but okay. it should be on the agenda so that the public is notified that there's a possibility when they see the agenda. So they see that it's, they've been notified that there's a possibility of there being an executive session. I, that might be a part of Robert's rules. I'm not sure, um, mm. but it should at least be on the agenda. And if we have no need to go in, then we just don't go in. Okay. All right. That's a good idea. We make it a or I'm not even sure Robert's rules. I should say the sun, sunshine rules, the sunshine act. No. No. Okay. All right. Very good. Anything else? All right. Very good. Motion to close the meeting to adjourn the meeting. Just, just you know, for the.